Hey guys, in this video I'll walk you through the tricks and hacks I used to make this animation. You can find the blend file in the description. Let's start with the cameras. Cameras are parented to an empty that's on a track, which is a curb. They also have a constraint to point to an empty, which is also on a track. The empties are parented to the tracks and then the tracks are parented to another empty so that everything can be moved around easily. The target empty also has some noise animating the location to simulate camera shake and make it look more natural. Also, cameras have planes parented in front of them, which adds some noise to the image. Now for the glass effect. This is just a plane sitting below the objects. The material is pretty simple, it's just a glass with some roughness mixed with a diffuse shader to make it more subtle. This uses screen space reflections, which is why it's not visible with the final orthographic camera. But that's exactly what I wanted anyways. Finally, behind the glass we have the background plane. And this is just another plane with a noise effect. This is a subtle background to add some more layering and animation. Alright, let's look at the bars at the top. Each one of these bars has an origin point at the bottom and scales in the y-axis with the driver. And the driver is the same for all of them. As you can see, there's a noise function here with a seed. The seed comes from a custom property in each of the objects. So we can have the same kind of animation, but change how it animates for each object. To animate it, we use the current frame divided by 100 to make it slower and then I divide the result by 15 to make it more subtle. If we set it to 1 for instance, it can get really wild. Ok, moving on to the console. Let's look at the cursor first. The cursor follows the size of the text automatically. That's because the position of the cursor in the x-axis is animated with the driver. This driver takes the length of the text object and adds a small offset. Then the material of the cursor includes a simple animation between opaque and transparent. I use the cycles modifier to repeat it over and over and over. And that's the cursor. Now for the typing effect. Sadly Blender doesn't have any way to animate text directly yet, so we have to hack it with Python. And the way we do it is down here, and in a pre-render callback. That means before every frame is rendered, we will call this function. Now the downside of this is that we can see the change if we scrub in the timeline. You can see even if I run this again, the text doesn't change. But it's definitely going to change when we render. The first thing in this script is the text and a couple of lists with random text for the boxes and the links. So the first thing we do in the callback function is assign a seed body. I use some random functions further down and Python assigns a seed for them automatically based on the current time. The problem with that is that the seed would change every time we render, so the text would be slightly different every render. We can prevent that by setting the seed ourselves. And then we have a reference to the main scene and a reference to the video sequencer scene, where we cut between all the different cameras. We also keep a reference to the seed objects and the frame from the video sequencer. Then we have this ticker variable. These are true every certain amount of seconds and false for the rest of the time. The math is based on the fact that we are running at 60 frames per second, so 120 frames would be 2 seconds. So if we divide the current frame by 120 and we get a remainder of 0, that means we're in a multiple of 120 and 2 seconds have passed. That's kind of the idea. Then we have references to all the text objects in the scene that we want to change. And here we start changing things. The first is the percentage text, which is this thing right here. It starts at 42 because why not? And then we add the frame divided by 100, so it's slower. I'm using two slashes, which makes it return an integer value, so we don't get decimals. Then we are updating the clock in the top bar. Remember internet time? 
Yeah, I didn't want to look up the formula, so this is updated the same way as the percentage. Now we get to the console part, and this is a bit more complicated. What we're going to do is take one of these strings from up here, and we're going to take only a few characters at a time. This is called slicing. We take a certain amount of characters starting from zero to the end of the text. That will be controlled by these variables. I want the text to start at the two second mark, so I've made a start variable with negative 120. And then add that to the frame, so for instance when the frame is 121, the slice will be 1, and we will show only one character. And when the frame is 122, we will show two characters, and so on. Repeat that for every frame, and you get a typing or printing effect. I multiply the start here to make these lines start later. And then we have the console prompt. Same concept but a bit more simple. It just uses the current frame, slow down a bit so it looks more like typing. Then we got some animation that changes every 2 seconds. Here we update this thing, which is just a randomly generated ID. And then we have the lock on data, which is a slice of the same ID. And then we got these blob data things here. Then for the ticker 5 seconds, we update the link data, this thing right here. It uses the choice function, which picks a random value from this list. Then we have the ticker 3 seconds, which updates the boxes. The sample function takes some values from this list, making sure they don't repeat. And that's the whole typing script. The side blob is basically a plane with a displacement modifier controlled by an empty. And the empty that controls the displacement is animated with a generated modifier to move in the x-axis all the time. The plane itself is transparent, but it has four particle systems set to hair to fill the area. But each one of them uses a different object with a different number of particles and seed to have some variation. The data stream is a basic plane, all the good stuff happens in the material. The trick to this effect is pixelated noise. I use a vector math node to pixelate the coordinates, and I control how pixelated they are with this value node. Then I animated the coordinates on the x-axis with the mapping node. Those textures are fed into a noise node and then into a color ramp to control the contrast. I also use a gradient node to fade it out at the end. The upper part of the material controls the intensity of the emission shader to get a glowing effect. And it also adds in a second noise, colored in red, to simulate bad blocks of data. Let's look at the scanning block. These bars are made with a small plane and an array modifier. Then there's a copy of it with a different material on top. This one has the count animated with some random keyframes. And I also use the cycles modifier to repeat it over and over. The arrows use the same kind of material animation as the cursor, they just have a slight offset between them. The text have an animation to move out of the way when the arrow and underline are there. And the arrow and underline are controlled by an empty that's animated on the y-axis with constant keyframes. This wavy line is just a regular curve with some hooks. The hook modifier lets you deform a mesh or a curve by moving an object, usually an empty. In this case I added a dot and a circle and patterned them to the hook empties so they move with them. The empties are then animated using the built-in function modifier which creates a sine wave. And then I move the wave and change the offsets to give it some variation. Now let's talk about the percentage widget. Trick to this part is layering. 
lots of circles and lots of animations. Some of the semicircles have a shader animation to make it look like they're switching on and off, kind of like an old light bulb turning on. The red line in the middle is a curve with an animated bevel star, so it kind of looks like it's filling up. The rest of the semicircles have an animated rotation using the noise modifier, and some of them use a driver to rotate slowly in the same direction all the time. Finally, it's time to look at this central blob thing. And I'm going to sound like a broken record here, but the trick to this? Layering. Let's disable everything and go step by step. The first part of this is the pixelated blob on the background. It's basically more pixelated noise like the data stream object, except with a radial gradient to fade it. The W coordinate of the noise is animated with a driver, so it changes automatically with the frame. This is all plugged into a color ramp set to constant to increase the pixelated effect. This math node set to power here adds some contrast, and this all fits into a mix for a transparent and an emission shader with a very small intensity. Then we have the grid. This is basically two planes with decimate and wireframe modifiers. The decimate modifier makes some mess in the geometry and adds these cool diagonal lines. Then we have the buttons, which are some boxes with text and some curve objects and icons. And on top of that, the widgets collection, which is some more lines and techy stuff. And then we got the blob itself. Let's look at this thing. This is just a plane with some modifiers on top. So the plane has a displacement modifier based on UV coordinates. It also has an animated strength to layer some more animation on it. Now the UV map itself is manipulated with the UV project modifier, which is controlled by an empty. And when the empty moves, so does the UV map. The empty has some drivers to rotate slowly, so when the empty rotates, it changes the UV map, which then affects the displacement. Then we have a cast modifier which squeezes it a bit. And then a wireframe modifier to add lines on top of it. The materials are super basic. There's one for the transparent field and one for the wires. Then we got the circles which are just curves with some basic materials and animation. And then we have these triangles that rotate around it. The trick here is that their origin point is actually right in the middle of the blob. So when they rotate around it on the z-axis, they also rotate around the blob. These lines have their bevel start animated. And finally, we have all the other circles. Not a lot of animation going on here. This one is a small circle with an array modifier. It's parented to an empty, which also has a driver for rotation, so it's rotating all the time. Some of these have drivers and some of these use keyframes. But they're all rotating in different directions and at different speeds all the time to add more interest to the whole animation. So yeah, that was the blob and the whole thing. Man, this was a long video. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more cool stuff. And don't forget to check out the blind file too. See you in the next one guys.